Hello friends, Nishan here. Uh, welcome to the fifth episode of Manipal Hospitals. Uh, fifth episode of Health Wives of Manipal Hospitals. Health Wives is a unique show wherein you get to ask questions related to health with the leading doctors of Manipal Hospital. So my friends, today the topic is something which everybody is concerned of. It is said that diet is like a bank and the good food what we eat is like a good investment what we do. If you see the data, if you see the status, uh, stats, it is said that uh, among the individuals about 20 years of age, 33.3% are overweight, 35% are obese and 5% are extremely obese. The poor food eating habits and lack of uh, physical activities are the major contributors for uh, uh, various diseases related to diet and nutrition. So to answer to all these questions, we have with us Dr. Kavita Simha, who is HOD of Diet and Nutrition Department. So welcome ma'am. Thank you. So we have lots of questions lined up for today's show related to diet and nutrition. So without wasting lots of time, I will go to the first question. Uh, the first question is from Mudit. What are the most common nutritious food in a veg and non-veg diet that one can follow? Um, actually, uh, there are many things. Uh, I believe the bottom line is that whatever is natural and fresh and has come, uh, has been passed on to us from generations is always healthy over what is available off the shelf or uh, processed. You know, something that you conveniently buy off the shelves may not be healthy. So the bottom line and very easy to remember is that uh, if you want healthy food, cook it at home. So that is the best advice in both vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Uh, Ma'am, according to you, what is the exact definition of healthy lifestyle and healthy food? A healthy lifestyle is something that, you know, uh, that enables you to be healthy, enables you to carry out your day-to-day -day activities, enables you to also have uh, a lot of energy uh, in excess that you know that you would require for stressful situations and also to ward off uh, lifestyle diseases, chronic lifestyle diseases as in diabetes or obesity or heart disease or whatever. So a lifestyle, healthy lifestyle uh, needs to take care of all these things. At the same, same time you also asked me about uh, healthy diet. Right. A healthy diet is something that includes all the major food groups in the right balanced way and uh, is fresh and is locally grown and is also uh, prepared at home. So that is what my take on healthy um, diet is. So the next question is from Rohit. What foods are high in protein? Um, if you're talking about non-vegetarian foods, you have the dairy products which are uh, really good sources of protein. And you also have eggs uh, and of course fish and chicken are always good sources. But then we don't always recommend eating red meat as it's associated with a lot of um, other risk factors as in cancer risk and other things. But uh, when you're talking about vegetarian proteins, legumes and pulses are the best sources, as you know. And of course, whole grain cereals are also good sources of protein. Of course, not to forget nuts. Nuts are a great source of protein as well. Uh, Ma'am, what is your take on protein shakes? Because now, uh say young India so most of the people run to gyms right. so they can reduce their weight and make good body like Hrithik Roshan six packs so they they get into buying more of uh, supplements that is protein shakes so right. what is your take on protein shakes yeah, that's a very good question actually and very relevant today because <laughs> everybody wants a quick fix everybody right. wants to take something off the shelf which doesn't require much time to prepare but then you need to be aware of the dangers of you know uh, taking high protein supplements without a proper doctor's or dietitian's advice because it could be harmful in the long run and uh, you know you never know what kind of ingredients are added to these proteins <laughs> sometimes steroids are mixed and sometimes you never know what kind of uh, you know artificial uh, sweeteners and preservatives are also added does it that. affect the bones ma'am i heard it like uh, more intake of protein will always lead to some damage cause uh, some damage is caused to the bones joints uh, I don't think there is any correlation with uh, okay. protein intake and mm -hmm. bone uh, damage as such. But then high protein is a risk factor for developing kidney disorders okay. as in, and could also lead to dehydration in the long run because you know excess protein kind of dehydrates and uh, that also puts a stress on kidneys uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. by maximizing the dehydration okay. levels. <laughs> 
So you suggest whenever you take any kind of protein supplements, it's always uh, to take suggestion from a physician. Yes, absolutely. A prescription is necessary. Mm -hmm. A prescription of uh, possibly a good brand, mm -hmm. which has been tried and tested, and it's uh, clinically, you know, uh, trials have been done on this product and have been proven to be safe, and uh, should necessarily be backed by a medical professional's prescription. So that should fit into a healthy, uh, balanced um, diet. Uh, plan as well. So supplements are any day not advised. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is from Nirman. What are good and bad carbs? Uh, well, good carbs are uh, uh, generally something that is complex and on the, and is fiber rich. When you retain the entire husk of grains and legumes, you are getting the maximum amount of fiber, which uh, is which has many health benefits, and so we call them good carbs. So bad carbs are something that uh, don't do anything, that is just empty calories and don't have anything, any other nutrients apart from just starch. So those will include anything white and refined in vegetarian products, as in maida, rice flour and white bread, anything white and vegetarian uh, will be uh, just uh, empty calories and then bad. For so even uh, rice? Uh, even rice white rice, rice, not necessarily rice. all kinds of rice. But yeah, white rice is generally uh, just When you are speaking of rice, I just remember one thing. Is brown rice better than white rice or boiled rice what we eat? It definitely. Brown rice because it tends to have more of the outer husk mm -hmm. still intact. That is if it's unpolished. Mm -hmm. If it's highly refined brown rice, it's the same as white. And if it's okay. steamed or parboiled, it tends to retain more of the nutrients. Because when they do the parboiling process, uh, the entire outer husk nutrients enter the rice grain. So thereby you are getting more of the nutrients. So parboiled or steamed rice is better. better. And at the same time, unpolished brown is always better than uh, white. Okay. Uh, so the next question is from John. What is the meaning of good fat and bad fat and which uh, food comes in which category? So basically he wants to know which food comes in which category. Okay. So what is good fat, what is bad fat? I think that's a pretty long list. <laughs> to cover in this forum, huh. but then I can just briefly tell what is good and what is uh, bad. Uh, good fats are something that are essential. I mean, there are all kinds of fats. Some are, uh, you know, generally manufactured in the body itself. So we call them non-essential fats. Uh, but these are manufactured from the fats that we supply in the diet, uh, which are essential. So then essential fats are necessary to produce non-essential fatty acids. So mm. uh, there are all kinds of fats. Mm. And then we have three major categories which we call PUFA, MUFA and SFA. PUFA is polyunsaturated fats, MUFA is monounsaturates and then finally we have saturated fats. All three are necessary although there is no uh, recommendation for saturated fats as such mm. and they are associated with the you know coronary artery disease. They may lead to blockage of arteries. So apart from SFA, the other two that I mentioned are necessary part of your diet and they are healthy, they are good fats. Okay. Now when we eat, we never think about so much of science. Science is involved in the starch, carbohydrates. Okay. So I guess uh, John must have got his answer for this question. That is good fat and bad fat. So next question is from Abhinav. What is the ideal distribution in one's meal of carbs, protein, vitamins, minerals and more? What he's trying to ask is what is the... Uh, intake of protein, vitamins and minerals and more. I think he wants to know what is the uh, recommendation yeah, levels. Of, what amount of protein yeah. is required in a day. Right. Uh, so when it comes to macronutrients, uh, we are uh, basically what we follow is the guidelines set by the ICMR or Indian Council of Medical Research. So they have set guidelines for Indians to follow and uh, uh, you know an adult sedentary man for example needs around 2,000-2,400 calories in a day provided is active uh, and a woman, adult sedentary woman needs between 1,800 to 2,000 again provided she is active. Now when it comes to distribution of carbs, protein and other macronutrients there is a ratio fixed rather than you know giving an exact number in terms of grams. So it is all based on how much calories you are getting. If you are getting a 2,000 calorie diet, 50 to 60 percent of it should come from carbohydrates. 15% uh, will come from proteins, rest will come from fats, which is a maximum of 30%. So that ratio is not, you know, uh, absolute. It's relative and it needs to be, you know, correlated with the energy intake. 
So that is as a major vitamins and all it is too long a list to cover mm -hmm. in this forum. But then uh, if you're getting maximum amount of carbs and proteins in the right balance, you're also getting most of your... Uh, so Abhinav, for more information, you'll have to come to Manipal Hospital. So, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So next question is from Rohit. If a high sugar diet is bad for health, then how can it be healthy to eat a lot of fruits every day as it contains uh, natural sugar? Um, a good question actually. Uh, but I don't know what is the level of uh, uh, fruit intake here being defined. Lot of fruits can mean many things to many people. You know, some people think eating even one fruit is lots. And some people think the entire day's intake should come only from fruits. So the level of intake also needs to be defined. But then there is a recommendation which says you should get at least one serving of fruit in a day. Uh, that is up to you know uh, uh, about 100 grams to 200 grams of fruit per day is recommended. And that is not lots. And if you're going to exceed that in any amount, it is going to be harmful in the long run because you're replacing other nutrients from other food groups. Ideally, we should get all our nutrients from a variety of food groups rather than sticking to one food source. So that is the only concern. Um, it's not sugar as in, you know, it's not going to be harmful uh, uh, to that level mm -hmm. where you're getting too much of simple sugars because mm -hmm. fruits ultimately are full of fiber and there are other nutrients as in vitamin C in citrus and there are antioxidants and there are many other things as well. So I wouldn't classify fruits as just simple sources of sugar. So, that so is intake of more fruits will it lead to increases of Well, again, we have to define what is more here. And uh, if you're sticking to the guidelines and maybe marginally overdoing this, it's still safe. So the next question is from Bile. I often miss eating my breakfast. Is this the reason for my gastric problem? Could be because, you know, long periods of fasting uh, generally tends to increase acid production. And then if you're not uh, eating anything in the morning to quench that acidity, uh, or quench that acid production, it may just worsen throughout the day. And of course, the rest of the foods that you eat during the day also matters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's very um, acidic and then high in fat and in oils, that also may step up your uh, acid production. Uh, Ma'am, I just remember one question actually. Uh, they say when you have a breakfast, have like a king. Right. Is there any correlation or connection for this? Like, is it necessary uh, that we should have a heavy breakfast and a little bit of mild uh, lunch and after that, just two biscuits or just fruits? Diet like a popper. Diet like a popper. You know, that used to be a concept and it's promoted widely. But it's then, promoted uh, worldwide. That's worldwide, the I know. <laughs> but then, uh, as far as evidence goes, mm, it's not backed by evidence. It's not backed by Not evidence. backed by evidence. What we actually have is, distribute your uh, carbs and proteins throughout the day in equal amounts mm -hmm. which means that all meals should be balanced. balanced as long as you know you're not exceeding in any meal and not you know being very uh, deficient mm -hmm. in any meal it should be good mm -hmm. this this kind of uh, advice is not practical also i mean children now you know uh, they have to rush to school and we all have uh, buses and trains and whatever to catch and we won't have time to eat like a king an elaborate breakfast, most of us don't. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. reality. That is true. So. That especially in Bangalore, I have seen uh, they exactly. have their breakfast in their vehicles, uh, rickshaw, <laughs> yeah, cabs. Yeah. So the suggestion is not to skip breakfast. Not to skip breakfast, yeah. whatever uh, small thing it is. It could just be a uh, boiled egg and a glass of milk or just, just a fruit. Apple. Oh, yeah, even a fruit, it's still important to have that. Okay. So Payal, suggestion for you from uh, Kavita ma'am is don't skip your breakfast have at least a fruit have at least uh, one boiled egg glass of milk would do, uh, be fine so next question is from uh, Reshma how many times should we eat in a day is it true eating six times a day is good for uh, losing weight uh, how many this is times? a kind of myth yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that I think I uh, already kind of partially answered in my previous uh, but uh, yeah there is no fixed amount of times that you need to eat uh, during a day to be healthy. Mm -hmm. It depends on your lifestyle, it depends on the practicality of everything. And uh, if uh, three meals are what you can get, by all means get the three meals, but then it should be balanced. It should include as many food groups as possible and it should meet your uh, nutrient needs. As long as you're doing that, three meals are also good and that is the way we've traditionally been eating mm -hmm. 
the six meal a day is a recent concept recent. and uh, you know many people are under stress to try and meet those six meals hmm. which is not happening and it's some better. always carry a packet of biscuit in their pocket <laughs> so that they keep eating <laughs> once in a while two yeah, biscuits what you eat during those six meals is more important than just getting six meals a day okay. uh, then we have a question from aparna does eating rice twice a day affect our health in any way um no not at all rice is not a villain uh, it need not be banned and it need not be blamed for everything we have on earth i guess we need to blame <laughs> the quantity what the is. quantity of anything will matter whether it's rice or chapatis or ragi they are all cereals and they all have equally uh, i mean equal amounts of uh, carbs or energy mm-hmm. or whatever so whatever you eat quantity is important and rice per se is not bad okay. as long as you balance it with uh, you know other vegetables and grains and everything Should so be a one bowl of rice is not is it's not harmful. It's, it's not, not harmful. harmful, but then again, as we mm-hmm. said already, it should come from complex mm-hmm. uh, carbohydrates. It mm-hmm. should be unpolished. Okay. So this is a question which I wanted to ask. Thank you, Ritika, for this question. Are cornflakes and chocos uh, healthy for breakfast? I'll add even uh, oats. Oats. Oatmeal. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it good for uh, breakfast? Healthy breakfast? Uh, it is ideally better you cook something fresh. from locally grown ingredients and something that you can you know freshly take off the stove and eat is always healthier than something that is processed and off the shelf because anything processed will have chemicals mm-hmm. uh, you know additives and sugar and what some kind of preservative yeah it so always has to have preservatives so ideally it's not a good situation at all unless you don't have any options and then you might have to buy something that is uh, whole grain and sugar free if possible but then if for those who can cook at home this is not a ideal option uh, the next question is from arvind how much chocolate cheese can i eat in a day and not to gain weight so this is some kind of secret if you and uh, if you don't know, it everyone if you follow. discover it can let us know yes. <laughs> now but then there's is no there such i know uh, uh, see the entire day's calorie intake will matter not from any particular food alone Uh, so the entire meal has to be calculated and planned out and it's better you consult a professional to see how uh, the chocolate can be fit into your day's intake it's not necessarily uh, to be avoided but then you have to see count the total calories and mm-hmm. stuff uh, there is one such interesting question from uh, simran mm-hmm. i often drink alcohol after having my dinner is it a uh, very bad habit brushing teeth after dinner is good habit but i don't have <laughs> the yeah alcohol yeah of course now uh, the recommendations are uh, there that uh, we need to minimize alcohol intake as much as possible and especially women i think it's uh, simple so ladies need to be more cautious uh, about alcohol intake because it affects them in different ways it might you know mess up with their reproductive system the uh, the menstrual cycle as well not to mention the high amount of sugars in alcohol per se so leading to weight gain and all that so it's better cut down and minimize minimize as much as possible that's so simran it's a bad habit <laughs> it's not a good habit it's a bad habit so uh, better try to reduce it lesser the better lesser the amount of alcohol so next question is from sneha i am a 23 year old vegetarian with a skinny body i want to put on some weight to look better and more presentable mm-hmm. what is the most healthy way to achieve this for a strict vegetarian for a strict vegetarian i think if if you not mentioned if you do take dairy products uh, that will be the best source of protein if you do and if you're not allergic to dairy products include uh, plenty of you know milk uh, curds and paneer made out of uh, cow's milk as far as possible in your uh, daily diet and nuts are a great source of energy and protein not to mention all kinds of other uh, micronutrients so a lot of handful of nuts i know that includes ground nuts and almonds and walnuts all uh, are healthy so you can um, step up on that and of course fruits are always a powerhouse of nutrition mm-hmm. so you can add them as well not to mention the whole grains and cereals which are always a part of healthy diet okay uh, so the next question is from diksha what are the benefits of eating eggs what nutrition does it provide the eggs are great sources of um, protein it's the best biologically available protein that we have you know they we grade the protein quality in different terms and the egg matches the highest level everything else is measured in terms of the quality of egg mm-hmm. so it sets the benchmark as far as protein is concerned um and other than pr- 
protein, you also have various um, fat soluble vitamins as in vitamin A in the yolk. There is also some amount of iron, there is biotin, there is riboflavin, there are many of other nutrients, you know, there's a long list actually mm -hmm. and it's all healthy, so it is good. Uh, I'm sure all the viewers also will be having this doubt. Is uh, eating yellow yolk or uh, yellow of the egg good for health? Like more eating of yellow, is it good for health or bad? Uh, that is, uh, again, we are guided by the recommendations. As long as you eat, the there's no such thing as more, huh. there's no such thing as less. Uh, everything is in a moderation and in a balanced way, nothing is harmful. I mean, egg is a natural source of protein as well. So if you're getting uh, three whole eggs in a week, that is the recommendation for Indians. Three whole eggs in a week is not a problem. If you're going to eat, uh, you know, some people do this, 21 eggs in a day for bodybuilding, mm -hmm. so that is going to be a problem. Nice. They don't eat yellow. Uh, you know, if it includes eat. yellow, uh, 21 per day is a problem. It's a problem. If it doesn't, then yeah, but then again, 21 eggs is not <laughs> something that's good. And the next question is from uh, Rohit. Why is uh, salt unhealthy? Salt is not unhealthy. It's very much a part of your uh, uh, healthy diet. It, it's needed. Sodium is very much important to regulate various body functions. It maintains your blood pressure. But too much of anything is always bad. So excess sodium or excess salt is bad. But then the recommended amount of salt, uh, as in what is recommended, is 6 grams per day. That is 1 to 1 1.5 teaspoon of salt in a day is not unhealthy. It is required. Yeah. So next question is from Anikit. How bad is high fructose corn syrup? How does it affect brain, body and other organs? Okay. High fructose corn syrup is something that is uh, made from corn. Uh, it's, it's a sweetener made from corn starch. It is a processed uh, sweetener and as it, it is with every other sweetener which is made um, artificially or derived artificially from products. Um, it, it, it can lead to uh, high insulin levels, it can raise your sugar levels, it can lead to obesity in the long run. So all these chronic lifestyle diseases are linked to high fructose corn syrup. I think it's by itself it may not be harmful but then it always is linked to many other uh, additives and chemicals which is usually part of processed foods. So in that way uh, avoid anything that is uh, that contains HFCS as in processed foods. Right? So there's a question from Prashant. How is brown bread uh, better than white bread? Uh, I mean, I don't know who told you brown bread <laughs> is better than white because what uh, we have available here locally at least, uh, both are same. Uh, not too I much. I said brown bread is made of wheat and uh, white bread is made of uh, maida. Uh, then again, we cannot uh, you know, uh, generalize saying all brown bread will be made will from whole wheat. Correct. They may still be made from refined flour <laughs> and then they could be having caramelized coloring to get that brown color. So we have to be sure, you have to check the label. If it says whole wheat flour uh, up to 100%, then that's made from whole wheat. If it says wheat flour, it is still refined flour. Okay. So the next question is from uh, Pooja. Is eating Maggi really bad for him? <laughs> Some kind of controversial question, I guess. We need not answer this. <laughs> so the next question is from Sanita. What to me? What meats are not safe to eat while pregnant? Yeah, that, that's a right. important. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's something important. So, uh, pregnant women are advised to take a lot of proteins, but then the sources of those proteins will still need to be seen very carefully. Uh, fish, especially, uh, sea fish are uh, you know poisoned with mercury. Now we have mercury poisoning in our uh, lakes and rivers mm -hmm. and seas. But in India, we don't have any statistics or data as such to you know know which fish will have less of a mercury and which fish has more. So to be on the safer side, we say uh, minimize your intake of sea fish uh, or any kind of fish in pregnancy. It could be just one serving in a week. All other protein could be safe as far as it's cooked properly, thoroughly and at home. So any kind, is, any kind of meat is fine? It's fine, but then it, it's Chicken, again, it's mutton. based on the prescription uh, by the doctor and then you know the dietitian. Uh, it's, you should not be overdoing any of the mm -hmm. things. Uh, the next question is from Anaga. Is it safe to eat sweets coated with silver foil? Uh, it's not safe to eat sweets even without <laughs> without silver, silver foil. foil. So uh, I guess that answers the question. Mm -hmm. And minimize anything occasionally is fine. Anything you're overdoing, uh, you know, in a day is bad. Okay. 
So there's a question from Aaron. I'm not sure what the question is. Is fat rice or Kerala rice good for health? Fat rice, I don't know what. The Maybe boiled rice is uh, referring to boiled rice. I think the boiled shake rice of rice. rice. Yeah. yeah, they are good for health. Whatever uh, you know um, that we have been traditionally eating. Uh, I think Keralaites eat a lot of uh, brown rice and red rice and the fat versions of the rice. It's absolutely healthy. You just need to see the quantity, overall quantity. So next question is from Shoaib Sheikh. How much water should a normal healthy adult drink on a daily basis to avoid dehydration? Yeah, that depends from region to region uh, and your activity levels. If you're very active, sweating out a lot, and if it's very humid, uh, then you will need to step up your intake of water. Uh, key to know this is to test the color of the urine. Mm -hmm. If it is clear, uh, then you're getting uh, enough water and you're well hydrated. If it is darkish, if there is very little urine production, then you are obviously dehydrated. You need to step up the intake of water. There is no recommendation as such. I mean, the, there is always this myth that eight glasses in a day. Eight glass, glasses in a day. Is, day it's, it's just a myth. Each person may de need uh, different, uh, you know, amounts of water based on their activity. Drinking more water does it have any kind of side effects, ma'am? Uh, it may have. If you're working out heavily and if you're an athlete, a sports person, if you're overdoing just plain water. It can be harmful, it can even be fatal. Uh, so you need to see what kind of activity level you have. So it depends upon the body weight? Uh, Not body only weight body weight, kind of the kind of activities you do. Okay. Uh, for a normal sedentary person, overdoing on water intake is not necessarily mm -hmm. a great idea. Mm -hmm. So I have heard drinking more water leads to increase in metabolism rate. Is it true? Uh, again, we need to again define what is more and what is what less is what for is. each person. That is different for each person. And if you're well hydrated, there's no need to, you know, there's no uh, reason why you should double your intake of water or anything just because it boosts metabolic. It doesn't boost anything other than, you know, filling you up, filling mm -hmm. up your stomach. Okay, okay. So this is a question from Laupreet Singh. I want to gain some weight. Can I know some supplements for that? Uh, ideally, we don't recommend mm -hmm. supplements to gain weight. You should consult a doctor or a dietitian, ideally, to get your balanced, uh, you know, weight gain diet and then follow it meticulously. Uh, the next question, Nisha Verma is asking, how many food groups are in the food guide pyramid? Okay, very technical, very technical I think probably studying master's <laughs> or graduation in nutrition. So uh, she has one more question, yeah. you can answer it yeah. all together. How many servings from each food group do I need each okay. day? Okay, I think if you have seen the food pyramid, it answers all your questions. Uh, possibly it's available online. You could download the dietary guidelines for Indians online. It's a PDF uh, document and it's easily available for public view as well. So that mentions the entire food group and the uh, you know the servings. I, I can just tell one or two because it's the longest. So we may not be able to cover cereals. I think uh, you know 30 grams is what we define as a serving. So 12 servings in a day of cereals, preferably whole grains. And uh, dairy products, that is milk, ideally you should get three servings. So each serving being 100 ml uh, in volume. So the other things, yeah, there are different things. For vegetables, there is 100 grams as a serving and you should get at least three to four servings in a day. So there is a lot of long list you could uh, download that PDF and you know, see. Okay. So we have a question from Gul Hassan. Is it healthy for children to be, a, uh, be on vegan diet? Uh, vegan diets, vegan diet, so. yeah, um, it is possible to be healthy on vegan, but then uh, you need to uh, carefully balance it. You should ideally get a prescription and uh, diet plan from a professional dietitian to do this. Okay, so it's not uh, healthy for children. It is healthy. It, it is, is healthy, healthy, but then it needs to be uh, planned by a uh, you know, mm -hmm. professional dietitian. You mm -hmm. may not know what is a good source of protein, how to meet, you know, how to balance, or if you're not taking dairy products. Because vegan diets also leave out dairy products and all kinds of meat are out. It's just vegetables and grains and all that. So you need to know what will be a good source, substitute for milk. You could get it from almond milk for instance. But then you need to know what the amount is safe for the child and all that. Okay. So friends, we are coming to the end of the questions. Okay. So from today's episode, we are introducing a new segment in uh, Healthwise show that is uh, Mythbuster. So in this uh, segment, what, what's going to happen is we'll be asking uh, questions related to various myths, related to various, various health disorders from the doctors. So regarding diet and nutrition, there are lots, lots, lots of myths. 
For example, there is one myth that is uh, drinking green tea. Yeah. Okay, it leads to increase in the rate of metabolism rate and it uh, leads to decrease of weight. It uh, helps in weight loss. Right. So is it true? A uh, lot of conflicting evidence. Because there are lots of branded companies who have been Which highlighting That's right. with lots of uh, brand ambassadors. Green tea is good for health. Very true. You know, I read a joke somewhere that green tea will help you lose weight only if you climb the mountain and pick the green leaves yourself. <laughs> So I have been drinking green tea for the last two years. <laughs> Nothing has happened. <laughs> Nothing has happened. So there you have. <laughs> okay. Now there is a lot of conflicting research happening. One body of research says there may be some amount of, not very significant, but some amount of weight loss is possible. There is another body of evidence which says uh, it's useless. But then you need to know that all these studies have used green tea extracts, which is a very highly concentrated source of green tea and not the cup of brewed tea that we have and uh, whatever other uh, research studies that have used green tea uh, in the cup itself I mean the liquid uh, have used up to 10 cups in a day so uh, we still don't know what are the toxic side effects of that it is high caffeine uh, for one and caffeine is known to suppress appetite in the long run so that way it may work it may suppress your appetite and then you know lead to decreased intake thereby leading to weight loss but then the, the weight loss achieved in all these studies are very insignificant. Okay. It, but then having said that, it's a no great There is no strong source. backing of evidence for... No backing of evidence as far as weight loss is concerned. But it's a great source of antioxidants. Okay. There is polyphenols, there is catechins and it is a great source of antioxidants. So you still can go ahead and have two to three cups of green tea in a day. But then it needs to be backed by a healthy lifestyle and balanced diet. By itself, green tea will not do anything. Uh, so, viewers, there is one more myth, that is myth number two. Uh, there is a concept called detoxification. Right. So, whenever some person uh, wants to reduce weight, they say that uh, first two weeks, you undergo this process of detoxification. Right. Uh, is it true? Um, this is again not backed by evidence. Okay. And no so national so guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I have seen many uh, these uh, health uh, clubs or whatever, fitness groups, mm -hmm. promote a detox diet, but there is no evidence. No scientific evidence whatsoever and no national guidelines prescribe a detox diet. The, firstly, there is no such thing as a detox diet. Uh, you should be ideally detoxing every day. And the best way to do is plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. They are the best detoxifying agents. Uh, drinking green juice? Uh, I don't think there is no evidence for all these things. As long as you know, it's something that you make from your kitchen shelf using locally grown, uh, freshly produced uh, you know, plants and vegetables, it's safe. But then whether it will detox you to whatever degree, there's no evidence. And then we need to again define what is detoxification. What is detoxification? <laughs> some might, vague idea. Viewers might have this doubt. What is detoxification? So no, exactly. exactly you know, I would also want to know what <laughs> is meant by all these popular uh, terms used. Detox ideally would mean, uh, I guess, supplying more antioxidants. Now, you have heard of free radical damage that, mm. that is so popular now. So many things can do that. Your diet itself, it's a natural product of metabolism. It's a natural product of digestion. So there are plenty of free oxygen radicals that are released in the body. Hmm. There's a normal process. And then pollution, cigarette smoking, alcohol, all of them also contribute to free radical generation. Now these free oxygen species, what they can do is attach themselves to other uh, healthy cells and then damage the entire DNA of the cells. Now this kind of damage is known to lead to uh, chronic lifestyle diseases. Could be cancer, it could be Alzheimer's, could be diabetes, it could be heart disease as in inflammation and all that. So whatever stops these free radicals from you know, damaging are called antioxidants. So these themselves are promoted as detoxing agents which you might as well you know, very well get from a varied diet including plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables yourself. So what you are doing is supplying a lot of antioxidants. That will stop the free radicals from you know, doing further damage. So that is the take on detox. Okay. <laughs> so viewers, we have come to the end of this show. So we know that uh, from September 1st to September 7th, we celebrate uh, uh, Diet and Nutrition Week. That's so ma'am, what message you want to give to the yeah, yeah. Uh, viewers related yes, to diet and nutrition? As Nishan has rightly said, this is National Nutrition Week which kicked off yesterday in Manipal Hospital as well. This is a nationwide event, uh, actually started in 1982 by the government 
to you know intensify nutrition awareness among public because today we have on the one hand malnutrition where crores of children are suffering from energy and protein malnutrition anemia and lack of calcium and all that on the other hand we have obesity which is also another form of malnutrition so to address and promote awareness and to you know uh, do the myth busting activities we have a lot of events planned in our uh, hospital there is poster display every day there is a contest and quiz and all that all that will go a long way to increase your awareness and you know and then if you know better you can promote it to your friends and colleagues so that is the basic idea uh, so i welcome everybody to attend this event which is ongoing till 7 september thank you okay ma'am uh, so it was our privilege to have you in this show ma'am so on behalf of all the viewers i would like to thank you for coming over here and sharing your vital knowledge regarding diet and nutrition so friends we'll be coming uh, with the next episode very soon till that stay tuned uh, stay healthy stay happy stay uh, cool